Now, <clears throat> this is just an old candle, about one inch in diameter. And my students actually bring me their old used ones. And I've got it in a, just an old candle holder, and as you can see, it's got wax all over it. You're going to need a candle, the candle holder, and this is the Crowlin Mat 1311. I know that some of y'all may be using Liberty or another product, but I trust Crowlin Mat because when I paint my acrylics over it, I know that they won't beat up. And it's like um, trying to put acrylics on oil paint that beat up, but that does not. And um, you want to be sure that you spray this Krylon matte finish outside. Again, it's number 1311. And anytime you can smell it even, it is not good. You need to get it where you're, um, the wind's kind of blowing away from you. This uh, has a cancer agent in it, and it's just, it just works wonders, but just don't do it in the house. It's a take-me-outside can. And you want to hold it back, and I'll show you that in just a minute after I've smoked the canvas. Now here is the washed moon yellow canvas, and I'm getting ready to smoke it. I um, went ahead and lit the candle so that it would get a good flame going. Now this candle's been used a lot because I like to do lots of smoke surfaces. And later, maybe I can teach you how to add more colors into the smoke. But I'm going to hold this spoon, and it's a tablespoon. You don't want to use a um, teaspoon. They seem to get hot. And this wooden handle doesn't mean a thing. It's just an old spoon. You don't have to have a wooden handle. Just an old oddball spoon. So there it's getting some carbon build up. And you need to cut your fans off in the house or above you when you're doing this because you can't get it to stay steady. Then I'm going to take my canvas, which is dry, hold it over, and I want to smoke it where I see that steady stream of smoke coming up right above the canvas. And this is where you probably need to be right under me where you can see it. And, but I'm going to tilt it and let you see what's already on there. It's beginning to smoke up nicely. I prefer a dark smoke. And so I put lots on there. And later if I find that I want more smoke, I go back and I add it. Even after I've painted my design. And you would just be simply amazed at how many people ask me when I'm at a show or teaching, how did I do that with my brush? Now there, isn't that a pretty swirl? Some people use a knife, some people use a palette knife. Uh, I found the spoon gives me a really pretty swirl, and I like that look. Now I might want to get a little bit up in here, so I'm going to touch up in there. And get it darker. Now after I've painted my design, I want to come back and maybe smoke it darker under the design. And we'll do that when we've got all that pears and little chickadee painted. Now what I'm going to do is just pat that and let it blow out. Set it aside so that you can see this canvas. And I'm going to take it outside and I want to hold this can of crawl on mat at least 12 inches away from my surface and mist one time out into the just the air so that you don't get little spits on it and about 12 inches you're going to just lightly mist it and that will hold all that smoke in place now at this time you're ready to transfer your pattern on and that what you can do in gray or you can do in white and I found that gray shows up good on that. Um, it's a dark gray. I do use a, a transfer paper from Laura Cornell. The reason is it's raceable, but when you smoke a surface, you can't really um, 
erase because if you erase you're going to erase them through to the smoke so that's why I, I try to when I'm painting paint over my pattern lines so that they don't show through and we'll let that Carlon mat we assumed we sprayed on. I'll go out and spray it and then the pattern will be put on and we'll be ready to go.